There are many obvious ways to improve your performance inside of Final Cut Pro. From generating proxy and optimized media to closing other applications running on your system. So I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at some of the lesser known ways you can improve performance with Final Cut Pro. And you might even be surprised to discover that some of these work better than a lot of the more obvious solutions. The first item on this list might possibly be the most important to know. If you are using the transform tool, you'll see this little icon in the top right corner. And what this allows you to do is to enable between seeing the entire video outside of the viewer or to only see the viewer at a given time. I absolutely love having this feature where I can see the elements that are outside of the viewer. However, this absolutely tanks performance. And I've actually discovered a lot of the time when I'm really struggling with Final Cut Pro's performance, I just need to disable this singular feature and that will get me back so much speed. Another surprising area where you can lose a lot of performance is if you decide to retime a generator inside of Final Cut Pro. Now for those more experienced Final Cut Pro editors, you might be aware of the fact that you can't retime a generator, so you actually need to first throw it into a compound clip and then retime it with Command R. You'll notice that I have this background element here that I've slowed down to 10%. And it took me a really long time to figure out why this particular project was running so slowly. It was when I discovered that just by disabling it with V that I gained back almost all of the performance I could ever need for this specific project. The third item on this list is to disconnect any external hard drives that you are not using, especially if they are not an SSD drive. For whatever reason, Final Cut Pro seems to try and access a lot of those hard drives even when you're not actually actually using it inside of your project. I'm not sure the full technicalities as to why this is, but this can lead to a lot of delay when you're trying to press play on your timeline. If you're not using a hard drive, especially if it's not a solid state drive, then go ahead and just eject those drives and get back to editing. Now this next tip to get back some performance doesn't always lead to better performance, but I have seen better load times, especially when it comes to using Apple Motion. And that is to disable any plugins that you are not currently using. Now you might be thinking to yourself, you can't disable plugins inside of Final Cut Pro. So I'm just gonna quickly show you a method that works great. All you need to do is go to Finder, go to your Movies folder, go to Motion Templates, and then locate whichever plugin you want to go ahead and disable. We'll jump inside of my effects and let's go ahead and disable my FCB's Pro Vertical. If I wanted to disable this, all I would do is right click and select Compress. That's gonna create essentially a backup of that plugin. Then I can go ahead and delete that original folder. The reason we wanna compress this is because if we have any old projects that are using that specific plugin, or we just simply want to re-enable that specific plugin, we want a quick and easy easy way of finding that inside of my effects folder. So anytime I need access to it, I just need to reopen that compressed folder and now it's re-properly installed for me to use. But by compressing this, this is gonna go ahead and hide it from Final Cut Pro and that can oftentimes lead to just a little bit better performance. We all get it. You want to impress everybody, especially your clients, with the absolutely complex timeline you have in Final Cut Pro. And it might end up looking something like this with expanded audio components galore. But at what cost? That cost is probably performance. If you wanna get back some much needed performance, a great way to do that is to go ahead and collapse all of the audio components. So to do that, go ahead and push Command A to select everything. Then we can right click and then select collapse audio components. Once you've done that, your timeline should look much more neat and tidy and this can improve performance because Final Cut Pro is not trying to draw waveforms and thumbnails for all of the various elements down on your timeline. The very last way to improve performance in Final Cut Pro is to just make sure that your internal hard drive has a sufficient amount of space. I'm not a computer engineer. I don't understand all the technicalities behind that. I just know that it's true. If you want to very quickly see how much space is available on your computer at all times, just jump inside of Finder, then go up to View, and then select show status bar. That's gonna show you how much space is available on your computer at all times, and I find this extremely 
helpful. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button. It really does help a lot. And also consider subscribing as I have new Final Cut Pro videos every single week. Also, you might want to check out this video where I show you a whole bunch of settings inside of Final Cut Pro that you should change to make you a faster editor. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.